Hey everyone, it's Mike D'Angelo from Body Evolver, and we have a really awesome guest with us today. It's Amanda Middleman, and she is from Huntington Beach, California. And uh, she is a uh, she's a uh, uh, she's something to be reckoned with because she has an energy that um, I think that resonates with a lot of trainers, but she takes it to a whole other level. And uh, I think that you know she's passionate. She's highly energetic. Um, she does, uh, you know, corrective exercise specialist, personal trainer, group fitness instructor. Of course, I'm reading this like bio here. Um, she's been at it for more than 20 years experience in the fitness industry. She's earned her master's degree in kinesiology and exercise science from California State University in Long Beach. That's, uh, that's no joke. And, um, you know, she was a finalist for the 2015 uh, International Idea Personal Trainer of the Year. Uh, Amanda is the co-founder of Momentum Fitness, a world-class family-oriented facility in Huntington Beach, California that you opened how long ago, Amanda? We opened the physical location two and a half years ago. I've been, I rented space. Um, I've been renting space, or I was renting space 2009 till 2013. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to, we're going to get into all that. So, you know, at her place in Huntington Beach, she does private training, semi-private training, group training, um, tons of fitness classes, therapeutic massage. She's even got a kid's program. Um, and she's been a member of the uh, Todd Durkin Platinum Mastermind Group since 2010. That is awesome. Um, and she serves as an active member of the IDEA program committee where she works with other gym owners and leaders from various segments of the fitness industry to collaborate on upcoming trends, education, and other ideas that will help fitness industry uh, help the fitness industry effectively reach more people. And uh, that is just the beginning of her bio. But Amanda, welcome and thank you so much for doing this this interview. And I'll let everyone know that I've never done an interview like this on camera so you're a brave woman thank you i haven't done an interview like this either we've done zoom but i haven't done an official interview yeah well i don't know we'll make it up and see how see how we do here so so tell us um tell us about you like where were you born how'd you get into the fitness industry like give us the uh give us the info i am the uh, my one of two daughters of my my dad was in the army um, he's a Vietnam vet. So yeah. I always say I was my, since he asked where I was born, I'm a Georgia peach. We only lived there for a while. But um, I always tell people I am my dad's oldest daughter and his only son. <laughs> he's kind of a tomboy, so I got to do all the stuff that dads want to do with boys. Yeah. With um, so I, I had momentum and my beginning in the fitness industry started in 1995. Yep. Actually, yeah, yeah, or 1992, I have twins, and yeah. um, boy-girl twins. I became a single mom very quickly. I wasn't a single mom when I got pregnant, but um, they were very sick, and, yeah. and doctors didn't think that they would survive past the age of two. Wow. So I, I became very passionate about learning about physiology and, and anatomy, and my daughter specifically had a lot of problems. And when they were about three, Two and a half, three, they started, um, they were in better health. But all that time I was doing my own studying of anatomy and physiology because doctors, um, they don't explain everything. So you have to do your own research and sure. babies. And I was going to know about this. So I got, I went back to school. Yeah. About two and a half, three, they were healthier. Um, still, my daughter was going in and out of the hospital. So mm -hmm. I, I took an anatomy class and I, um, what, that was one of my first classes and I would go in every office hour she had her name was Peggy and I would ask her question after question after question and um, I just I loved I really fell in love with anatomy and how the body worked and when you have I think when you have family members it's beyond family members it was my babies that are sick sure, you know, yeah. I developed just a love and an appreciation for health right. because when you're not healthy all you want to do is get healthy right and so that was the beginning, actually. I, when they, my babies were about three and a half, I wanted, I was, they were healthier, they were getting healthier every year. I wanted to start working out again. And the only way I could afford a gym membership was if I taught, because I couldn't, I couldn't afford babysitting and the membership. So, I, all right, I'll start teaching aerobics. And I, start, I taught step aerobics. That's awesome. Oh, it was, it was fun. I miss it. And uh, 
So then what happened from there? So you did a lot of a lot of classes and that was obviously working for some, you know, other gym or, or what have you. And where was this now? Was this in California or? Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I was in California. Yeah. So uh, I was, a, and let me backtrack. I was an athlete growing up. I was a swimmer, a mm-hmm. state swimmer and a cheerleader and a song leader. And, um, you know, I was always a- athletic. So I knew yeah. that I would feel better if I could exercise again. Mm-hmm. And it was important to me to get back in the gym. Plus vanity. I was a young, young I was a young mom too. And, uh, but I just felt better. So I started teaching and there was this community in, um, in my classes. And I always left feeling better. And they, the people in my classes would ask me questions and I would want to find the answer for them. And um, specifically my, my women who were um, perimenopausal, mm-hmm. well, men too, and, and postmenopausal, they had all these questions and I, was, I just became so interested in, in helping them find the answers. So I fell in love with fitness and beyond because it was much more than just fitness. It was the community. It was, I mean, these people watched my kids grow up and, and they just... That we, we just, yeah, we had this positive. You left and you felt better. You went to exercise, but you felt empowered. I felt empowered. And I know the people in my classes did when we left. Right. And yeah. you formed these friendships. That, yeah, yeah that, that, sense of, that sense of community, I think, is, is huge. And, it really is. You know, and when you can impact people and when they have questions and you can, you know, if you don't have the answer, you're passionate enough to go find the answer, you know, and then the more you do that, just the more people you can help. Yeah. Yeah. And the more people want to find you and then they, they ask, they would ask me questions and they wanted me to start training them. And I, so I started, I learned to, I became a trainer and mm-hmm. I started training out of my house and other people's homes. And then finally, um, as my kids were getting older, I, I got remarried and, um, I started training on my house again. Um, it just came time to start renting space. Right. Yeah. And, and I did that. And then, I started to grow my own group fitness programs in these spaces I was renting, and then we outgrew. So I went a couple different places. You know, we were too small, got too big for one, moved to another, got too big for the other, and then we opened our brick and mortar. Yeah, so that's how you that's how you eventually, you grew it big enough where it was like, you know what, I got to do my own thing. Yeah, yes, I, I want to do my own thing. But here's a, for anyone who is wanting to do this, the mastermind group is what helped me. And it came down to, there was one day um, we were at a mastermind meeting and I was so frustrated. I couldn't get my place open. I, you know, you you have to find the funding and the, um, just, you know, I just, it wasn't working. And I, and I was so frustrated and I was in tears and Todd listened, Todd Durkin listened to my whole story. Yep. And he, and uh, Joe was there. My, my, they were all, we were all listening. We were all going around the circle and, um, he said, the only person holding you back is sitting in that chair. And, you know, when someone says something powerful like that from the heart and they're listening and, and you know they, they want the best for you, it, it hit me and he was right. And um, I have a picture I'll show you right here. Yeah, yeah. See that picture on the wall? It's of Coronado Island. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Same right there. there. So yep. that was, I don't know if you can see it without the light. That yep. was, um, I don't know, it was one of those life-changing moments. And he was right and it with like, Almost exactly a year later, I opened up Momentum Fitness. And I, but what, what it was, was, I mean, we put, you know, we put our life savings into this. And, um, but I believed in it. And I couldn't, I couldn't live with myself not opening it. It was such a drive in me. And what it came down to was, am I, I'd rather fail than have, to have never have tried. Yeah. yeah. And so here we are. Yeah, well said. That's awesome. Yeah, and it is scary, man, opening your own place and kind of putting it all on the line. It's, yeah. you know, it's absolutely, absolutely no joke. Now, I was reading through, I was going through your website, and you got a great website, and I love your writing style with your blogs and stuff. And in there, um, it says, there's a blog in there about leaning in, and I just, yeah. it's a really cool thing that I think you should share with, um, share with people. So tell, tell us about the leaning in part. So every year we come up with a one or two word theme for the year. Mm-hmm. And I, I read the book by Sheryl Sandberg, which is, if anyone needs a great book just about women in business, that's an awesome book. So I, let, I read that book, but it, to me, 
the story comes from when I was, a, I skied growing up and with my dad being his only son and his oldest yeah, daughter, Right, I love that. I went on all the black diamonds. My, my sister refused. So I was like, I can do this. And the worst thing he could call me was a girly girl. But there was- And you could live with that. <laughs> right, yeah, I can't live with that. At age 12, I got scared all of a sudden. And he, he would tell me, you have to, lean into and he, he corrected me because he read it and he said i didn't tell you to lean into the hill like up the hill but i know he would tell me to lean into the downhill so lean into what you're afraid of and look two feet in front of you where you're going to carve your turn and make the turn there and that's all you focus on all the way down the hill don't look to the bottom of the hill at the distance that you have to go because that's scary if you just go two feet, five feet in front of you and lean down the hill and into the turn. You look where you're going to turn and that's where you'll turn. You're going to make it down the hill. And so I, that analogy I think works for life. If you lean into your fear rather than away from it, mm -hmm. uh, it you really see that it's not, those hills weren't so powerful once I got into them and I, I looked where I was going to turn and I, I could see myself making the turn and mm -hmm. stop seeing myself fall and I didn't fall. Yeah. I could see the success, so I do that now. When I start to get afraid, I lean into it, and I see myself being successful, yeah. and I focus on what my goal is, which is to help people, right. and I lean in. And yeah. when I'm tired, when I'm afraid, anytime, I lean in, and that's what I want to do this year, where to, to continue to take our business to the next level. Yeah, so I think that's very powerful. I think the whole leaning in part, and then to not – have the anxiety of thinking too many steps ahead and just to focus yeah. on the one step that you're taking right now because, I mean, face it, the facts are the only power we have is in the present moment. It is. You know, it right is. Right here taking this step and you're focusing on it. Yeah. And you, know, you know, you have much less anxiety and, you know, about the future and, and whatnot. And, uh, right, and success is making it through that step. I do three, three big steps a day that I have to do towards my big goal, my mm -hmm my push goal or my big goal. And I do those every day and I feel successful. I used to have this long list of things I had to do and I never got through it. So I always felt like I'm never going to be able to do this. Now it's three things. And I strategically, I strategically work on my list every night before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And then I have my three things I have to do the next day and yeah. I get them done. Those are the first things I do. Yeah. And that, I feel successful with those three steps. Cause if I look at the big picture, it's too much. Yeah, yeah. So you're prioritizing things before you go to bed. You wake up, crush it, and then boom, go about your day. So what yeah. are what are the things that you're looking to sort of develop or create? I want to create a program, an online program for women who are it, it's women who are um, over forty, mm -hmm. and it's about exercise and taking your life to the next step. Walking, it's leaning into your life, walking past fears. Sure. Yeah, I think a lot of women get into the forties and I hear so much, well, I'm just too old. That's a, that, I hate that statement. It drives me nuts yeah. because 70% of aging is, a, is our choice of how we're going to age. Right. So many people talk about, they don't want to age like their parents or like someone that they know who, who ended up sick and in a hospital and, and they didn't, I think a lot of women are afraid to take steps towards their dreams because they think it's too late or, you know, now they're, they've raised their kids and now it's time to do these things. And I really, one, it's just very be in the beginning, but I really want to start a program online. Yeah. That's one of my one of my things that I'm doing right now um, for women to take their life to the next so, level. And with the way you know, with the way the internet is working, I mean, you can have tremendous impact on a lot of people. You know, and that's what I love to do. Yeah, oh, that's really awesome. So like, um, it's paying it forward because Todd and and um, there's so many people who've had a huge impact on my life. Right. Yeah. Step it up in that mastermind group. Um, you know, they raise the bar when you have other people publishing books. Well, I got to publish a book now and running um, event, educational events. And it's just, I want to pay it forward to. Um, I mean, I've had doctors ask me about my mastermind group because they want something like that. People are hungry yeah. for that extra lift. And I'd love to start a program where um, online, where people from all over, where we can work together and yeah. take our, yeah. our lives where I can help people take their lives to the next That's step. That's awesome. So what, what's like a, the main sort of fitness message that you find yourself repeating over and over again to like many of your clients? Like what's the, the, the big thing that just seems to just come out of you so naturally and, and has impact on people? 
that fitness is not a one-time quick, I'm going to do this and lose 20 pounds. It is a lifelong adventure. You've got you've to make it fun because you are going to do it for the rest of your life, but you only need to concentrate on today. And then you do it again tomorrow and you show up again tomorrow. And it's, it's, you've got to learn to exercise right. Yeah. We don't, we, people grew up on farms 100 years ago. We were active. And I think one of the people just think, oh, I can just go on a run or I can just go to the gym. And today people are not moving um, healthy. It's crazy, so, right? Need, yeah. I mean, I correct lunges every day, all day, and squats. And we squat for the rest of our lives. The other thing is, as you get older, to sit still is just silly. Uh, you got to be able, okay, I'm just going to put it out there. I do not want my kids to be wiping my rear end when I'm 90, okay? It is serious. Amen. <laughs> so you got to be able to get off that pot when, yeah. you, when you're 90. And that's why, that is the thing I say a lot. Yeah. I, I, yeah, my, my place is used to that. So yeah. That's awesome. Well, you're keeping it raw, though. You're keeping it real, and, and it's real, yeah. and it is real. And it's it, it, it's it's a long adventure. Too. For people not to move now and, and to think about the impact that not moving is going to have in the future, they're just thinking about how they want to be lazy now and not move. Whereas, nice. you know, if, if we, and yeah. I, I like the way you said adventure, that you turn the things yeah. into an adventure, like a daily adventure, and that you feel good about it. And that, you know, yeah, you got to do different things and have fun. We were in class today and we're dancing. I teach a spin, we call it spin fusion because it's not all spin. You don't need an hour of cardio. Right. It's a half hour of cardio, of the, like high intensity yeah. um, interval training on the bike. And yeah. then we're all doing weights. And actually this one today, we were on the bike, off the bike, on the bike, off the bike. Yeah. Not, not lifting those little eight pound weights on the bike. We're on the bike lifting heavy weights. Yeah. And it's, we're dancing and laughing and they're complaining and I ignore them and we just, we just keep going anyways. And they, they just want to be able to complain and that's, that's fine. Yeah, and they know yeah. I'm going to say, keep going anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they feel better when they complain, but if they know it falls on deaf ears, then they get yeah. it out of their system and, and you're there to help. And they got to be able to laugh. It's funny. We have a good time and uh, they don't know. I call it fusion because that means I can do whatever I want. Right. There's no like spin fusion, spin in something else. And right. who knows what it's going to be today. It might be bands. It might be tubing. It might be weights. It might be TRX. Yep. So that it, I like that because they don't really know what they're going to get when they get in there, but they like it. Yeah. They want a little adventure. Yeah. And you know, that is, yeah. And when they, when I suppose if you had the same routine all the time, it'd be pretty boring. <laughs> it'd be boring for me. I try to teach the way if I were coming to a class, what I would want. Right. So that would keep me coming because if I got bored, I wouldn't go either. Right. I can't exercise at home. I can't. If I went to a gym, like when I go see my son in Hawaii, yeah. I go into the gym and I'm like, what should I do? I have to, you know, I got to look up and I have, I have tons and tons of books and books of programs and it's no fun to do it by myself. Sure. So make my friend go work out with me. Yeah. So we, you know, it's, it's so much more fun to work out with people and, and change it up at the last minute and make right. it an adventure. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's awesome. So let me ask you this. What would you say the typical fears and frustrations of like your typical client would be? What do you think the main thing is that, you know, when people, I guess, sign up or if you were to be able to talk to someone that probably needs to be working out, you know, you know, what are the main kind of fears and frustrations you think, you know, most people are faced with? You know what it is? They're afraid they're going to be the only person in the room that can't do it they can't they're going to have the lightest weight or they're going to not be able to finish they're afraid they're not going to be able to finish the class or they're going to look foolish wow. petrified yeah so um by so what do you by, do you are you i'm talking to them i'm joking around with them i let them know this is not that serious this is i mean fitness is serious but you know this nobody's paying attention what i tell them is um, we're all too busy looking at ourselves to notice what, what's going on in the room. And yeah. as a, our culture, though, is developed. I, I feel one of the things I'm most proud about about my gym is my people will go up to someone new and say, hey, I'm so-and-so. I don't have to ask them to do that. You know, some of the gyms you walk into and they kind of like up and down and, and there's this cult in there. We're, I'm sure they all fitness is kind of cult-like, but our people are like, come on, let's do this. You're going to love it. And they're so nice. So I talk to when I teach my class, my people in the front row, some of them need, need me, but my people in the back, back row, in the corner, by the door, that's the woman or man that I need to talk to. And that is who I talk to in a class. And in small group, I'm, I help them 
they need to feel successful. Yeah. So I think one of the things that instructors do is we see how the move should look like a lunge. Well, there's things that people can't hear yet if they're just starting. So you find one thing that they did right and you let the rest go. It's not going to be perfect. It takes a while. You got to build strength. You got to build the movement pattern, neuromuscular pathways. Mm -hmm. So you find the one thing and you make a huge deal. Like I jump up and down. Yes, you got it. And they, they're like, oh, I'm not so bad. Yeah. And they come back again. They're sore. You tell them, awesome. That's great. You're not going to be so sore next time. Um, it, it, you know, you got to make it fun. You got to make them laugh. Sure. I feel like if they don't laugh, that's not always true, but I can usually get them to giggle a little bit and it loosens them up. Anytime you laugh, you feel better. Sure. So I can get them to laugh and stop taking themselves so seriously. Not everyone is staring at them. And uh, that it's really important to me. That seems to work. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really great. Sounds like you're having a lot of impact on people and uh, and I can I can see why they're attracted to come hang out with all the positive feedback that you're providing and the fun in the class and the community. Um, that's awesome. Tell me about the, the people that you have working at your facility, like your team. They, I have got a great team. We took, I had to learn that. I, I used to, um, I hire people because I, I like everybody that I learned. So um, we do a three month trial period to make sure they're happy, we're happy that we, that we kind of, we're, our personalities go together and, and their, their mission matches ours, their values match ours. Mm -hmm. we, we really, I, I, my team are passionate trainers. Um, now we've moved into m almost all of them, their trainer, and those are the people who teach my classes as well. Because mm -hmm. I want experienced people to teach classes so we can still help people. We're a smaller facility, 3,000 square feet, 3,200 square feet. And so I, I want my classes to be world class, where we're helping people learn how to move in the classes too. And they definitely get more attention when they're in small group training. But anyways, we work on, um, we have monthly meetings. We have a Facebook group that's just for the team. I call them my team. Mm -hmm. I am just one of the team. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a leader and I work on my leading skills. And when something isn't going right, I have to look at me too. That's if that, I don't know if I'm right answering the question that you yeah, had. No, no, I get it, yeah, totally. So you're looking to yourself to, to, you know, if you don't have the team around you that you're, you know, that's going to help you bring the mission that you're looking to bring, then, you know, the answer lies within you in the chair. The same thing that Todd had said to you. you know? Yeah, right. It does. And I just read, there was a great article about um, John Wooden in Success Magazine this month and three or four coaches wrote a little essay about him. And one of the one, the first he just did an interview too. I forget his name. He, John Wooden stopped him. He'd spent all day on an interview with him, this, this coach. And he, it, he would take the time to meet with people and listen to him. And they literally went all day. And he said at the end of the day, really, you only need three things though. And it was about, it's having the best players, mm -hmm. making sure those players um, play for the team and not just themselves. Mm -hmm. So best players on your team. I had to learn that. I thought I could, make them the best players and help them. And, and I'm still willing to do that, but you got to find someone who's willing and who wants to be that best player, a top player in the field. And we need to play as a team because we are, we're going to grow. We're always talking about that. This is a team effort. We will grow better as a team than individually. Right. And, um, then don't be the expert of everything. You know, I'm always learning too. Yeah, sure. Totally. Yeah. And that, uh, what was it? There's a saying like nothing great is done without enthusiasm and then, and you have plenty, you have a ton of enthusiasm, <laughs> it's awesome, I love it. Um, and then also, uh, you know, nothing great is done alone, solo. No. I mean, we're all in this together here. You we know? are, uh, yeah. You know, and if you can be a leader in the sense of bringing people together on a, you know, on, on this mission that you all share together, you know, and, and yeah. you probably help put that passion in people you know, like in, in your team members and, and, and get them to, you know, be a part of something greater than just themselves, just like you said. Yep. Yeah, that's a really rewarding place to live. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can see the impact it has on all the people you touch and it's like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is all right. Woo that's awesome. <laughs> so who would you say your biggest influencers are? Like who is it that you sort of look to 
as like a beacon. Todd is definitely, <laughs> my husband always, he'll say, what would Todd do? <laughs> what, would Todd one, do? what would Todd do here? He's huge from Todd is Todd Durkin is someone who walks his talk. Yeah. I've met people, you know, when you, when you're at a conference and they have this great talk and then you go up and they're kind of cold. Mm. Oh, I've had that happen before. And it just, Oh, you're not who you said you are. He's not, he's, he's welcoming. He's, yeah. you know, he's, he's like so a I think of today. Yeah. He's just, he's out there. He, his heart is, Outside. Right there. I mean, yeah. he watches videos. He wears his heart right on his sleeve. He I love that about him. I do too. It's just awesome. Yeah, I do too. It's just I love that passion. Um, just yeah, and it's and it's honest and transparent, and he is who he says he is. I want to be like that. Yeah. Um, I was just watching last night, so I can't say these have influenced me in the past, but I really, I love strong women who have overcome adversity, those stories. So any of those women's stories that, I mean, the Aaron Brockovich movie really got to me. You know, I love that movie and I love um, Eleanor Roosevelt. She was, yeah. you know, I love that woman. She's one of the people on my list that I'd love to, you know, if you could bring them back, I'd love to have lunch with her. And then last night I watched a, a documentary. I'm such a nerd. I love documentaries and I, I it was a, it's called Unsung Heroes and it's about women in the military and they finally, you know, they're just, they have the memorial now for the women in the military that were nurses and, and pilots and it, way back when, and now of course we have pilots and pe women on the battlefield and flying and um, the wasps, the women who are Air Force pilots, you know, in World War II. Yeah. I mean, it's just, those kind of, those women inspire me. Yeah, way ahead of their, their time in the sense that yeah. you, know, you didn't even really hear about them much. No, in, in fact, they, some of them should have gotten um, medals of honor and didn't get them until either they were very, very old. And, and I mean, re really recently, so it was 97 this memorial went up, but um, I mean, they just, they didn't get recognized. Nobody even knew who the wasps were. This is a brand new thing. It just came out a few years ago, right? Yeah. Because yep. yep. women flying jets and they didn't want anyone to know because I guess women thought shouldn't be doing that. So sure. I just, yeah. Trailblazers. I just think women like that are, yeah. they set the, the tone. They, they open up the doors for us yeah. well, and didn't get enough recognition and they did it anyways. It seems like you're following that same path there, sister. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to. <laughs> um, all right. So now um, let's talk about uh, a few silly facts here. So um, what's like your favorite exercise? Burpees. <laughs> Sick. What Nobody that? likes burpees. I love burpees. They're just, they work everything. They're like the multitasking exercise. All right. You push okay. up in there, use your legs, use your core. Yeah. And you know, I tell my, even my ladies who don't jump, so I can do a whole workout and I can modify it so that they don't ever have to jump. Right? And you can make a high intensity workout without having to jump. Sure. But a burpee, what happens when someone throws their back out? They crawl. Yeah. You have to crawl around the house. They can't stand upright. So burpees are awesome. They're not going to hurt. They're not going to hurt your back. Yeah. So I, but they don't jump. They just sure. put their hands around, walk their feet out, walk their feet back in, yeah. and they open up people's hips. Yep. Right? Tight yeah. hips are, are a huge reason for back pain. I love burpees. Yeah. Nobody else does that. That's awesome. All right, so what do you hate? What's the exercise you hate the most but you make all your clients do? You know, I'm not – I don't make them do it because I don't want to do it, and I do a lot of my workouts with my – I'm up and down with them even if I'm not – and when I'm training, I don't, but in my classes, I'm, I'm correcting, and then I'll do the work, you know, the exercise. They want you to do the exercise. Sure. I hate mountain climbers. Isn't that funny? I really? hate mountain climbers. So I rarely do them. I'll do them sometimes, but I'm just, yeah, not your, not your Not your favorite thing. All right. All right, so now let me ask you, what do you like to do on the weekends? <laughs> what do you do to, like, what do you do to kind of let go and just, you know, I don't know, regroup? Okay, I'm going to be honest here. I'm not very good at that. Um, I'll work all weekend if my husband doesn't come and drag my butt out of <laughs> my office. I love the writing. And I, last night I watched a documentary because my, my husband went to a party. I can't go to it. My, real quick before I tell you the rest. My husband is a, um, he's a Highlander. He throws telephone poles. And these guys, there's like, they're, 
big guys. You got to be big to do this. I try to do it because I told them I'm strong. I can do that, but I'm not big enough. Yeah. So I, anyways, I can't go to this barbecue because these got a bunch of these big guys eating crappy food and it drives me nuts. And I can't keep my mouth shut. So he's, I'm not allowed to go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he's so, banned anyways, from these parties? Yeah. That's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm not allowed to go to those kind of parties. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what you're doing to your body? Your blood vessels. Well, thank you. If you just stop eating oh, that. Yeah. You're that trainer, huh? <laughs> I am that trainer. I can't keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> Good for you. Not that I don't eat that stuff myself, but you know, they're a little excessive there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um I love I like to garden. Mm -hmm. We'll go um we haven't done this in a while, but we we need to go again and do bike rides on the beach. Mm -hmm. um, I like to go out to lunch with my friends and with with my husband. Um, just yeah, we. I so see lots of I see you posting lots of photos on Facebook of you hanging out with God. I don't know twenty people at a table in a restaurant. I mean, this happens. Like, it seems like it happens weekly or something. I don't know. Yeah, we. we yeah, <laughs> there. Yeah, my. You know, my business is. They're they're my friends too. So sure. that the one we did we did a, a Spartan race. Yeah. Ago, yeah. And I did not want to do it, but I ended up having such a blast. I told him I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna take it easy. And I just do not. That's a lie. Yeah. I just but I tell myself no no I'm gonna take it easy. I don't want to get hurt. If I get hurt, that's I can't afford to get hurt. And then one of my guys goes running by me, and I'm like, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> we're on it. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. We finish an hour before everyone else. The three of us, me, and my. And uh, my friend Jeff and um, my friend Conti. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And you've yeah. got this whole you've got this whole Wonder Woman persona thing going on. So let's talk about that because I, I wanted to mention that at the beginning, and then of course my yeah. clinically undiagnosed ADD got in the way, and I forgot. So I feel you. But all your photos on Facebook. I mean, you've got your you you're, and your grandmother, right? I am. Oh my God, that's so oh. awesome! I see this picture. Of, I remember when, when I first met you, I saw you on Facebook and, and I saw, oh, she's got a baby. That's awesome. And then like, I don't know, we chatted like that week and you're like, oh no, that's my great kid. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, my son was, uh, he's in the army and um, yeah, right before he left for Iraq, he, yeah. he made Lily. And uh, good, good boy. With his, well, yeah, with his high school girlfriend, now they're married. Um, okay. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. I'm a Gigi. A Gigi. Gamma guns. What is the nice? And what does Gigi stand for? Grandma guns. Gam now, gra see, yeah, grandma guns. There's a lot of women in my classes. They're grandmas, and we say now we say gangsta grandma, and we're all yeah, boy. yeah. What's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? That's we're not ready to. I, I'm my another big thing you'll hear me say is don't act your age. I am not. They, most people think I'm Lily's mom, which my son is like, she's the grandma, she's the grandma. And I'm like, shut up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always tell him because I feel guilty, but like, you don't have to walk in the place and yell it, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then well, that is awesome. They think I'm his sister, which, yes. That's cool. Yeah, I get it. But um, she's so fun. Yeah, that's she's awesome. Fun. Uh, the Superwoman you. thing. Yeah, the super, is it Superwoman, Wonder Woman? Or or Wonder it? Woman, Wonder Woman thing. Um, People was just used to call me that, and I was like, "That's cool. I like that. I've always loved superheroes, and um, I, I always, always." So when they started calling me that, I just kind of said, "Yeah, that's me." Totally <laughs> so stuck, and then it just stuck, and then so now I just, yeah. I I'm not afraid to wear a cape. And when I went to Hawaii the first time to go see my little Lily, she and I both walked around. You'll see on my Facebook, there's pictures of me and Lily in matching Wonder Woman outfits. Yeah, I saw that. You, are, you went around like that all day? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I'm not afraid. We, and it, um, we had a meeting. We were in one of our mastermind groups and Todd said, what do you do to make your people feel special? And you know, we were all throwing things out there. And I, I said, I give them a red shiny cape. And they were like, what? So I was like, I guess that's cool, huh? That's I, awesome. I mean, who, if you wear a red shiny cape, yeah. oh, you know what? That actually, okay, wait, years ago, I was having, I just had this bad week. My son was still in high school and I was teaching classes at a gym and I dropped him off at surf in the morning. They have surf team here. So yeah. you skip a period, you get to go first thing in the five in the morning. Yeah. And um, it was not Halloween, but they had a sale. It was right after Halloween, like November 3rd, and there was 50% off sale. So there was a Wonder Woman outfit, and I bought it. Yeah. And 
I had, I don't know, it had been, I don't remember why, you never remember why it was a bad week, but I just remember I thought, okay, I'm going to just put this outfit on and I'm going to teach my class in my Wonder Woman outfit. And I wasn't going to get aware for a year and it was like the coolest outfit ever. So I put it on and I walked in the gym and taught a class in my Wonder Woman outfit, cape, boots, skirt, every day. I cut the sleeves off because they were long sleeves and I was going to get weight. I sweat like a man. I drip sweat. Even so I cut the sleeves off, I ran on the truck and cut them all off. And to this day, people will go, I remember when you taught that Wonder Woman outfit. And that's when the name really stuck. And yeah. That was it. Right. So if you wear a red shiny cape, you can't help but feel more powerful. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to have to get a cape then. I think. Right? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Put one on just for fun, just to up yeah. my game. Yeah. <laughs> It feels good. All right, everybody. Go on my cape. <laughs> Give it a shot. Amanda says it works. I believe her. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Amanda, thank you very much. Any final thoughts on, I don't know, I don't know, life, training, you know, creating your own destiny, which it, uh, apparently you are, man, and it's awesome. And I love your energy. Oh, thank you. You know, if there's anyone watching this that feels stuck, you just got to decide not to be stuck and take steps that scare you. You know, just getting into the mastermind group. I first meeting we had when I went to the platinum group was you feel like, Oh, everyone's got it together, but me. And, um, when I finally, I finally broke down and told them, I, I feel this way. Everyone's got it going on, but me, they all, everyone felt the same way. Everyone sees what everyone else is doing and you think everyone's got it going on and you feel like I'm never going to be, I'm never going to move forward. And, but if that's, if there's someone out here there that that it's like in your belly and if you don't do it it's going to explode inside of you 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 have this disconnect then you just need to do it you just need to take the next indicated step and just lean into that fear make it happen and it's not pretty there's many days i want to crawl under my desk and say amanda's not here today but then right after that someone comes in and they're in tears because um, they fit into a pair of jeans that they've been trying to fit into for 15 years. And you go, Oh, that's why I do this. You know, there's, it's not, most of the time it's not glamorous, right. but you know why you do this because of those moments that are so powerful. You don't have those every day, but you hang on to those and they're much more powerful than the hard work you have to do and the, the grind. Yeah. So, and, and that's why, and that's what you live for. That's why you chose this. Yeah, that's why exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you. That was really, really awesome. And uh, and we'll uh, I don't know we'll we'll catch up soon. I'm sure. Yeah. Bo show. All right. Well, thank you for honoring me with my yo. Peace out. Um, my baby, your boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.